As you can see, the room has changed. And I know some of you are asking for a room tour, but I'm not done with the room yet. With a new room, we gotta have a new PC. Which is perfect because the 12th gen has arrived. And working with MSI. Yes, thank you MSI for sponsoring this video. I can build my own personal fastest gaming PC that money can buy. Looks like I need a taller table. But you know what, for this video, we can just tilt down. I think that works. Before I start this, I want to let you know what's the plan for the next couple of weeks. So this is the first part of maybe a four part series. I'm gonna build my dream PC today. Then hopefully the second part, I would be making that dream PC to a dream setup because I wanna do like a gaming, streaming, editing setup. Then three and four will be a bit of a secret. So subscribe, yeah? Anyway, again, thank you MSI for sponsoring this video. We already did a 12900KF video last week, but the thing is, we had some problems with temperatures. It was throttling at 4.7 gigahertz when it can go to 5.2 gigahertz. I know I got something wrong there. I said 5.3, but I got it. 5.2. MSI has sent me their MPG Core Liquid K360. If I'm not wrong, besides the V2. This is their best all-in-one water cooling. It is expensive, but you need the big boys for the big CPU, or rather the hot CPU, the hot boy, the cool kid on the block. And of course, MSI also sent me their motherboard, their Z690 Force Wi-Fi. It's actually exactly the same as the carbon Wi-Fi, just white. You know what, I think because of the table, I'm gonna take a seat. So I'm gonna change the angle a bit. <laughs> I keep my... I hit my knee. All right, yeah, this is so much better. Oh my God, I, I, I actually have space. So we're gonna put the CPU first. So something to take note, the LG A1700 socket opens a different way, which is always interesting to see. It's pretty easy now to locate the triangle on the CPU. If you look at the bottom left, it's a big ass triangle. And to find out where's the triangle on the socket, on the black plastic cover, there is a triangle there. But you know, if you buy secondhand and it doesn't come with it, there should be a triangle on the metal piece itself. So yeah, there is a triangle on the metal piece itself. Mm -hmm, I see the triangle. And there we go. Triangle in, pull the metal piece down. RAM. DDR5 RAM. Found my RAM. So this is the G-Scale Ripsaw S5, 2x16GB, 5200 mega transfers per second. Super fast, super sexy. I'll try to get the mic close to the RAM so you can get that ASMR. That was more of like a click, but let's do a click click. There we go, click click. So one thing that I didn't really show you guys, briefly show you guys last week, is the 5 M.2 SSD slots. And you might be asking, who the hell has 5 M.2 NVMe SSD to fill up? I do. I do. I have 5 NVMe SSDs ready to be installed. Two of them, 500 GB, and three of them, one terabyte. There we go, one, two, three, four, five M.2 slots. Five M.2. <laughs> Just for the video, lah. I'm not really gonna use all three, or am I? Okay, I guess next we put this in the case. Ugh. So I'm using the Lian Li Dynamic O11 XL, big one. And I know it's a bit like, wow, well, you use an uh, old case. Trust me, trust me. The part three, part four, the one I'm keeping secret, right? You will understand why I'm using this. I need to check one more thing, okay? SATA 7 will be unavailable when installing M.2 SATA SSD in the M2 underscore 4 slot. So because I filled all the M.2 slots, there's going to be SATA 7 that will not be in use. So doesn't matter because I only need 4 and this has 6. Heal. Very nice. Oh, I love this case, man. The amount of space you have. Okay, so before I forget to mention, why I'm using the Dynamic O11 case is because I don't have any hard drive at the moment. But this case has a function where I can just add a hard drive here, put it in, 
and it will be connected to the motherboard. Powered up, SATA, all done. Now on to the cooler and this is where if you already have an MSI all-in-one cooler and you're thinking of upgrading, they will give you the LGA1700 mount. Just go to their website, stated on their website. So if you've never seen this cooler before, there is a LCD screen on the, the block. Why? Because can. So here's the thing about PC building and making videos when I do PC building. There's actually a lot of like mundane, you know, screen things that take quite some time. And I don't know where I'm going with this, but there's going to be a time card. So there's going to be more than a time card. I ran into a problem. Basically, MSI sent me the wrong LGA1700 mount. It's a small mistake. I don't entirely blame them, but I would have to wait for a replacement, which may delay this video. So I started tinkering to see if there was any solution to this problem. And I realized the LGA1700 size is in the middle of the last gen LGA1200 and the Xeon LGA 1366. To illustrate, this is the mount. If this is the LGA1200 and this is the LGA1366, the LGA1700 is right here. I don't know whether you can see the problem, but this piece will stop you from mounting the AIO cooler. So an easy fix would be to remove it. My first thought was to send it down, but the hole was way too small to do it quickly. Then I thought, how about drilling? Which di didn't work. Lah. It didn't work. Then I had this tool that is able to send it quickly. Like a zzz, zzz, zzz. You can see, you see the video. Lah. You see the video. I, I, I can show you B-rolls. Okay, the B-rolls. It's a cool tool. And it worked. And now on to the time card. Moments later. It's 5 a.m. right now. I've done it. My goodness, I think it will work. We'll see, we'll see. Oh my God. Oh my God. I think it works. Don't forget to crisscross. <laughs> it actually worked. It actually worked. Good job, me. Okay, it's just a, a few cables here and there and um, time cut. More moments later. What's left is the GPU. MSI RTX 3090 Gaming Trio. Also, one more thing. I did say this is going to be a streaming PC, so I have the Elgato 4K60 Pro. Add the easy one first. Lah. I have not tested the PC, but I have faith that it will run. Uh oh. There we go. Holy moly, man. So here's what's gonna happen. It is 6 a.m. I am going to rest. I'm gonna come back in the afternoon and set it up behind me where I plan the PC to be. Only thing left is to set it up, install Windows, and install all the drivers. And let's do something different. For this video, let's enjoy how this PC looks for a moment before we get into using the PC. Let's go! There you have it, the Intel Core i9-12900KF, MSI Z690 Force Wi-Fi. You have MSI Core Liquid K360 water cooling with a freaking LED screen. 2x16GB of 5200 mega transfers per second. MSI RTX 3090 Gaming Trio X with an amazing Lian Li case. I mean, this PC is super sweet. Checking online prices, this will cost about $5,000 upwards, depending if you can even find a graphic card. So I already benchmarked this PC. I will show you the results later. I installed Windows 11, so do take note this is Windows 11 performance. So I've been playing Horizon Zero Dawn for quite some time already. It's a pretty awesome game. And I mean, I'm playing in 1080p. Like, this is a 1080p monitor. And I get about 200 frames per second. It's, it's insane. Like the, This game is so freaking cool. Like they have freaking machine alligators or crocodiles. So we get some fire arrows. Jump, slow-mo jump. 
Look at that explosion. Oh, oh, die. Oh my God, this, this is the frames. The frames in my face, I love it. I love the frames in the face. Benchmarking the CPU with the MSI cooler has better results compared to last week's build. When all cores are at 100% load, it will firmer throttle to 4.8 GHz. But here's the thing, if you're gaming, this won't matter because what matters most is single core performance and games will never use 100% of your CPU. So on top of showcasing FPS in gaming benchmark, I have added the temperatures of both CPU and GPU at its max temperature while benchmarking. So I benchmarked Shadow of the Tomb Raider with and without ray tracing, there is an improvement compared to Intel's last gen and AMD's 5950X. Assassin's Creed sees big improvement and I ran the benchmark three times to triple check. But one thing I do wish is that I have more time and resources to retest the other CPUs. The other benchmarks are new, even CSGO and Valorant because this time I'm benchmarking at 1080p because that is what most CSGO or Valorant players are playing at. But this will give you an idea on how the PC will run. And one thing I forgot to mention about this cooler is that the water block itself has a fan. So it kind of cools off the components around the CPU as well. And also a freaking LCD la, that I can put my face on. La. <laughs> so I want to talk to you guys about the Intel CPU prices. Looking at just benchmarks, not talking about real world performance or games, it's clear that Intel have a very good product. Although yes, it gets real hot and it sucks a lot of power, they have better performance in single core and multi-core performance. With that, looking online, the price of a i9-12900KF will cost you about $1,185. And comparing to the price of the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, they actually dropped the price of that CPU. It used to cost $1,250 but it went down $1,096 on Amazon. And if AMD need to drop their price, you know that Intel has a good product on their hand. So if you go for the 12700K, the price will be about $699. And if it's the 12600K, then it will be about $500. You will expect to see AMD dropping their price on the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 as well. Which leads me to some software issues and um, it's mainly to do with gaming. So if you don't know, Intel's 12th gen CPUs are running on hybrid cores, efficiency cores and power cores. And there's some issues with game and anti-hack softwares. When they try to switch from efficient core and power core, it triggers some kind of third party and it thinks you're hacking. So some people are experiencing some game crashes, but you know, honestly, this is to be expected. Any new CPU that launch, this kind of thing happens. With Intel, it's a little bit bigger because it's a hybrid core is something new and this is for Intel and Windows to somewhat work together hand in hand and apparently for Windows 11 the update is already out or going to come out but for Windows 10 it's a little bit longer apparently it's going to be next year but so far I've been upgrading all my PCs to Windows 11 and there's no problem I'm not paid by them or anything it's just you know I just like new things and if the new things don't interfere with my freaking editing software no problem really I am very happy with this PC do stay tuned hopefully Hopefully next week or the week after, I will turn this setup and even my old setup into streaming setups. We have a lot, a lot of hardware to add, microphones, cameras, PS5. Uh, really, thank you MSI for sponsoring this video. They have been supporting this channel for quite some time already. So do check their products out. You know, I use their motherboard, their water cooling and their GPU. They also have cases, they got fans, they got NVMe SSDs. Go and check that out. Other than that, thank you so much. If you have any questions about the 12th gen or the Z690, or DDR5 RAM, do comment in the comment section below and I will try to reply as many as I can. And if you want any PC advice or you want to know whether the build works or what, join my Discord. There's a community of people that will help you, help, help, help you out. Anyway, thank you so much guys for supporting me. I always appreciate all of y'all. And I am done.